a really important question that I, I see um, from time to time, it's obvious that this question was never asked, is will it work? So, so here's an example. The client um, has three sons, and she's got this house, you know, here in Contra Costa County. It's worth a million and a half, something like that. I don't know. And she write, writes an estate plan. She wrote an estate plan 20 years ago. And the estate plan said, I leave everything equally to my three sons, which is fine. Um, 20 years ago, that would have worked just fine. But over the course of the 20 years, one of the sons moved back in with mom because he doesn't have a job. He's really not employable, so he's kind of completely dependent on mom, and he has no place to live, and he has no money with which to purchase a place to live. And um, mom, in her old age, has spent all of her other money. So by the time mom dies, really all we have is a house. And her trust says, I leave everything equally to my three sons, one of whom needs that house. You know, so may, and maybe if mom had known that that's how it was going to play out, she would have written something different. Maybe she would have wanted that house to go to the son, or she would have said, you're all going to own the house, but he gets to live there. You know, there are things we could have done. That turned very ugly, because um, the other two sons wanted the dependent child to get out, and they ended up hiring attorneys to do, you know, an eviction of their brother. So thinking about, will it work, you know, Equally to my three sons, that's nice. That's, that's nice. But sometimes equal isn't what's best for everybody. Sometimes something different is more equitable. In the example I just gave you, maybe something that favored that other son a little bit would have been better for the family. Because right now they are you know, completely blown apart. There is no family anymore. Another thing that we see problems with is Prop 19. You all familiar with Prop 19? <laughs> Everybody loves it, right? <laughs> Prop 19 is um, the law that came into effect last year. And it had two, two sides to it. The one side is great. Everybody loves it. We can take our low property taxes and move to any other county in California and have the same low property taxes under certain circumstances. Everybody loves that. That's great. The other side of Prop 19 is you don't get to pass your real estate down to your children with that low property tax, except in a really, really specific situation. Used to be you could pass all of your real estate within broad limits. You could pass all of your real estate on your death to your children, and they would pay the same property tax you were paying, even though you bought that property in 1978. Now, we can't do that anymore. Thanks to Prop 19, we can only pass our personal residence, and only if a child turns it into their personal residence. So, if our children inherit our personal residence and they want to turn it into a rental property, the property taxes will go up. And, you know, some of my clients had, um, they didn't have a lot of IRAs, they didn't have a lot of 401ks, they had a lot of rental properties. That was their retirement plan, and it was a good plan. Now they have these rental properties that they would like to leave to their children, but when the children inherit the rental properties, the taxes are going to be so high that they really won't be profitable anymore. It's really hard to make that work. So just understanding that, if you have real estate, whether it's your personal residence or some commercial property or some rental property that you've got, and 
there's any kind of, you know, it's kind of important to me that my kids be able to own that property, you need to talk to your, um, talk to your lawyer. Find out what, what can we do to make that happen if the property taxes are an important issue. Um, the other thing is, is there enough cash? So my prior example when I was talking about the three sons where one was living in the house and that was all there was, there was no cash. So that's an example of that. How, even if it wasn't a problem that um, the son needed to live in the house, even if they all agreed, we're gonna sell this house, there's no cash on hand right now to do the things that need to be done. So, you know, sometimes you wanna think about that. What, how are your investments allocated? you might want to make sure that um, there's going to be a little bit of cash in the trust in order to do the work of the trustee. So an example of this that I just had not too long ago was talking to some clients about, well, you know, we have this checking account and the savings account, and they're never going to be over $184,000. So why do we need to put them in the trust? Well, you don't if you only worry about avoiding probate. But if you don't put one of those accounts in your trust, your trust will have no cash. And then you die, and how is the trustee going to hire a lawyer? How is the trustee going to pay the accountant to do the tax returns? You want, there to, you want to at least think about, do we need to figure out a way to make sure there's cash available to pay for things? If you need help with your estate planning or administration, we also offer a free discovery call to help get the process started. You can find more information on booking your session by visiting absolutetrustcouncil.com slash scheduling.